What's up guys, my name is Phil. Welcome back to Miranda Detailing and welcome back to another weekend wash. So today we're gonna to be washing the Sequoia. So guys, the Sequoia has been, well, hung out to dry. <laughs> we haven't washed it in a long time and really it hasn't moved that much. We only uh, did a couple of mobile jobs in the past couple of weeks. So it really hasn't been driven that much. But still, I want to give it a bath. I want to clean it up and uh, test some products on it. Now, we also have this vehicle in. This is a customer's vehicle that we're going to be starting tomorrow. And we are doing a full paint correction on it. No ceramic coatings, but just a paint correction. And uh, we'll show you more of that later. This will be uh, definitely in a, in a later video. But we're going to show you some of the products that we're going to use to work on this. Uh, some new stuff from Extreme Solutions also. So I'm going to pull this out of the way, <laughs> maybe just pull it right up here, and then I've already detached it from our trailer, so we're going to pull this uh, into this spot and take a look at it, and then we'll wash it. Okay guys, here's a Sequoia. We moved everything around. I have my cart uh, ready for washing. Hey Misty. And uh, let's take a look around at the Sequoia first. And let's put my coffee down here. You'll see I have a new foam cannon. This one just got from the MJJC uh, company. And we put two ounces of the Jay Leno Garage soap in here. I actually really like this soap. It is nice stuff. Uh, got that in the glove box, uh, subscription box. So I'm gonna use it today. I put about 16 ounces in there, so uh, two ounces to 16 ounces. Um, that's kind of a high dilution ratio, but we'll see how this foams. Now, remember, I'm going to use my pressure washer. Hey, what are you doing? What? I'm going to use my electric pressure washer, and that doesn't always do a good job because it doesn't have the flow. It doesn't have the, the power. Um, I use it with my other foam cannons, and it does okay. The real test would be using the pressure washer from the gas pressure washer, which if this doesn't perform well here, if I'm not liking it, then I may just switch to the gas just to show you the performance of this foam cannon. Um, so my friend Tony Ralda also just picked one up, which is pretty cool. So he's gonna try it out also, so check out his channel. I'll have it uh, linked down below. We do a lot of work together since he is here locally. And I have my transparent bucket, I know. It's just for show. If you wanna grab one, I'll have the link down below. It goes to Detail Division. So let's take a look around. The wheels are really the worst. Front wheels are bad. We're gonna really clean up the wheels and tires, wash the paint, and I put the 303 graphene coating, spray coating on the hood here, probably going on six months, maybe a little past six months now. Um, so we'll see how that is responding. I think it might be almost gone because it was raining the other day and it didn't look like it was performing anymore, but it just sits under all these trees. And it went through many, many storms just sitting out here. So we'll see. And uh, yeah, let's get this thing washed up. All right, let's test out the foam cannon. It's nice and mixed in here. I really like the design of this. It is very, very heavy duty. Um, got some different adjustments up here as well. So let's give it a try. Whoa. Nice.
okay, that is awesome. That really applied the soap super thick. I wasn't expecting that, that's pretty good. And I know, I did put a lot of soap in there, but didn't use that much at all. I think I probably used about eight ounces of the solution, probably around two ounces of soap. So not bad at all, actually no, 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 no. I put two ounces in 16 ounces. So that's probably around one ounce of soap. Yeah, it's actually pretty good. That's really good. That's some really thick uh, clinging foam as well. Now here's the thing about foam like this. Not everybody likes the thick foam like this. They think it's a waste, they think it's a show, all of that. For some, maybe it is, but for me, it isn't. I don't use it as a pre-wash. So I pre-wash the paint first my rinsing, my APC rinsing. That's my pre-wash. It's very effective and it's quicker for us. Maybe not for you, but it is for us. We've tested it, we've done all the math, we've done all that. It works for us. We've been doing that for years. We've narrowed it down to that. We've tried all the different methods and this is what works. But here's the thing with thick foam like this. And this is just my philosophy on it. The thick foam like this on a vehicle that's been pre-washed properly, the foam adds cushion. Now, some may think, oh, the, the cushion is not enough to really clean the paint. Yes, it is. It's still contact washing. You're still removing whatever film or grit that might be still left on the paint after the proper pre-wash, but that's minimal. This is providing a lot of lubrication and cushion. Those little bubbles in the foam provides cushion. It allows the mitt to glide over while still picking up grit off the paint. If you have a different idea or a different philosophy, fine. But no one has really proved that it does or doesn't work. It works for me because I've done it so many times I can see the results on vehicles. That's the way that we wash vehicles. So yes, we do like foam. Uh, we want a high sudsing shampoo because of the, the cushioning effect. So that's just us. If you disagree, fine, but don't try to disprove it because you can't. But this soap and many soaps, I don't really have a preference when it comes to soap, as long as it foams well and it's a lubricating soap. That's all I care about. Again, it's because my pre-wash stage is so effective. It, it, it works, it removes all the grit and traffic film and all of that, so I don't need a soap necessarily to do that for me. Um, I'm doing all of that pre-washing beforehand, so I'm not worried about that. And uh, even with really nasty vehicles, I'm going to rinse an APC rinse extremely well first before I do any contact washing. And that's what you wanna do anyway. Even if you wanna use a pre-wash wash or soap, shampoo, whatever you want to call it, like the built hamber one. And that's fine, that's, that's up to you. You can rinse, foam it down, let it dwell, pulls off all the junk, rinse it again, then you do your contact wash. Cool, that's great, that's your method. And if it's quick for you and, and efficient, excellent. Um, everybody's got their own method and everybody's timing is gonna be different as well. So you can't say that doing that for me is only gonna take a few minutes you're not here doing the jobs that we do. That, that, that will vary across the many different vehicles that we do anyway. So you can't really put a time on it like that because each job is different. Now here's the thing about uh, detailers on YouTube and forums uh, trying to push their idea or their agenda on other detailers trying to inform them and, and give them information when in reality, it can actually lead them down the wrong road. Um, here's an example. I have a lot of people suggest to me, use this chemical, use this shampoo, you should do this, you should do that. And <laughs> a lot of the times I've already done that. The person just doesn't know it. They're simply assuming that I don't know what I'm talking about or that I'm doing it incorrectly. But the fact of the matter is, we've been doing this for a long time and we've tried it many different ways. So don't just assume because you see it here on YouTube, you see me doing something that I haven't tried it other ways. I have. And 
I used to be one who would scour YouTube and copy all these guys and get information from them and even talk to them and reach out to them and I'd get information and, and some of it was good and relevant and, and it helped me. And then other times, well, the information kind of led me down the wrong road and maybe I implemented some things from what they said um, when it comes to washing, you know, like this. But then as I'm actually on these jobs, many, many, many hundreds of jobs, I have learned to narrow down what works for me. And I'll eliminate some of those things that I used to do that would slow me down or they just were not needed. And I got rid of them and I don't do them anymore. And I kind of created my own method. That's what you need to do as a detailer as well, especially if you're doing this as a business, because again, you've got to think about time and expense. Now, even the advice that you hear me give, try it for yourself, but if it doesn't work for you, don't bash it because it may just not work for you. So give it a try and maybe you'll find that you just need to tweak it a little bit. Maybe you don't like the whole APC rinsing and you think it wastes water, but at least try it. And if you don't like it, no problem. Don't bash it. Uh, don't think that it doesn't work at all for anybody. It simply may not work for you. So that is going to mislead a lot of new and upcoming detailers. They will get confused because some of that advice, they are thinking it's, it's law, it's a rule, and that's not good. That can actually harm you in the long run. It uh, kind of sets up a standard in your mind that you either can't achieve or if you try to achieve it, it doesn't work for you. So you have to change that method up, adapt to your own situation. Detailing is like that. It's very fluid, literally and figuratively. Um, you can try all sorts of different chemicals and processes and dial in what works for you. And don't take what you see here on YouTube or other advice from other detailers as law or rote, not even mine. If you don't like my method, not a problem, but I'm sure you can pick some points from it and ad adapt it to your own method. Make it work for you. And guys, if you want to hear me talk a lot more about these different processes, um, check out our new channel. I'm gonna put a link down below and it's basically a, uh, an extended version of this channel called the Detailing Workshop. And it's basically our one-on-one -on -one training, our online training, whatever it is. But on that channel, I basically talk more to you guys and, and give advice. So um, this channel will have a lot of showing you of the work like this. Uh, but that channel is going to explain a lot more. It's going to answer questions. It'll be, you know, it can be uh, question and answer as well. I want to do some live sessions on there, do some question and answer, and just try to answer as many questions as I can from the knowledge and experience that I have. So in my IK foamer, I have Kosh Kemi Green Star, diluted four to one, I believe in here.
nice. That cleans up really well. Okay guys, the vehicle is clean. Wheels are all clean, tires are clean. Now let's just check out the hood once again. You can see the protection is actually hanging on. It is pretty much at the end of its life. But you can see it'll start to break up and sheet. So yeah, that, that uh, 303 graphene is still hanging on, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's pretty much gone. It's, it's six months now and I mean, still, I mean, that's not, that's not bad. I'm going to say this a lot in many of the videos when it comes to durability of even products that say up to a year, I'm probably going to cut that in half and say six months, six to eight months, maybe less but it all depends on where the vehicle is. Does it sit outside like this under trees? Does it not get washed often? Is it just not really cared for? Then this is the durability you're looking, you're looking at. But still, I mean, look, it's not that bad. So it's not like it's just completely flat. It is sheeting off a little bit. All right, so let's see what we can put on here. Let's dry everything and let's see what products we can test on the hood. I'm gonna use some Total Detailing's Crush. This is their Auto Surface Protection Crush. Now you can use this in a bunch of different ways. As a concentrated uh, sealant, it is SiO2. So it says it's a detailer, but it's concentrate. So you can, as it says here, uh, standalone spray sealant, drying aid, wireless wash, rinseless wash, clay lube, detail spray, pretty awesome. So you can dilute this to a variety of dilution ratios. So when it comes to the dilution ratios, you don't have to be so exact and, and worrying about use one ounce per 32 ounce bottle for this or two ounces for that. You know what? I usually just eyeball it, put a couple of glugs and whatever that solution is, maybe two ounces per 32 ounce bottle and use that for like everything. Quick detailer, glass cleaner, clay lube, all of that. I mean, two ounces to 32 ounces, that's nothing. You know, a bottle like this will last you a long time if you do that. Pretty versatile stuff. So let's do this. I'm gonna just uh, apply it onto my damp towel already. It's not soaking wet, it's just a little damp. And I'll just apply it to the rest of the vehicle. And like I said, then we'll put some other stuff on the hood. This stuff is so slick. It is really, really nice. And you know, I'm not in full sun and it's not super hot out, um, but I'm not seeing any streaking even on the glass. It just dries, flashes right away. Very, very easy to use. And I have to say the surface, incredibly slick. So this could be really nice for maintenance. You can top ceramic coatings with it, of course, waxes, sealants, whatever. So your maintenance washes can go super fast. If you already have good protection, your washing should be quick and then you can just dry with this stuff. Use it as a drying aid and just mist it on, use a nice drying towel and you're good to go. You'll have super slick, glossy paint and this stuff will also last a couple of months on your paint. In the words of Gabe from Total Detailing, it's stupid easy to apply. It is so nice to work with. His products are great. He's got three products so far, and uh, the Shampoo, Drift, Kinetic, which is the other um, detailer, spray detailer, which is also very easy to use. And then this stuff, which is kind of like Kinetic, but much, much more. It's concentrated, you can do a lot more with it. It is very, very nice stuff to use. If you get a bottle, just get, you know, if you wanna get a small bottle like this, if you're looking for a good, Quick detailer um, with SiO2 in it that's easy to use, nice slickness and gloss. Then try it out for yourself. You know, don't just take my word for it. Try it out for yourself and reach out to Gabe also. Um, if you want to ask some questions about the products or anything like that, he stands behind his products. That's it. All right, let's try something on the hood. Okay, now it's nice and smooth. I don't need a clay bar it. Um, but I am going to use G-Technic Panel Wipe. This stuff is so strong. I don't usually use this for coating, you know, prep wipes, uh, panel wipes. It's just so, so strong. I guess on light colors like this, it's not bad. 
um, but on soft black paint, uh -uh. I, I, I just don't use it. If, if you want to go ahead and use it and you don't have issues, go ahead. But I'm using it on here because I know it is very, very strong and it's going to strip off any remaining sealant, whatever on here. And I'm just going to go heavy and use up the rest of this bottle. Yeah, I could polish it, but for the sake of time, I really don't need to just use a panel wipe like this and it's nice and strong. I polished it once before and the paint is in okay condition. Now I can feel the paint's a little, a little grabbier. All right, good. So here are the two products we're going to put head to head. Why? Uh, just because I have them and I want to showcase them. This is the Art to Shine Bio Nano Pro. This is the ready to use formula. It's not the concentrated formula. You can get it in concentrated formula also. I also have their graphene um, detailer and I have their other uh, nano sealant. And then the Kosh Chemi spray sealant. I've used this before. Application for both. I've actually used both before and application is pretty straightforward, easy and really nice. And both have really, really slick and glossy results. So I'm gonna put it on the hood and just see the durability, you know? It sits out here. I'm not expecting it to be that great, actually, for vehicles that sit outdoors. It's just, it wreaks havoc on any type of protection, whether it's sealants, waxes, or even ceramic coatings. So, you know, having a garage or even just a canopy or something to put your vehicle under, that's just gonna save you so much. But not everybody has that advantage. And, you know, here we have our pine trees that are gonna be dropping sap soon. And, uh, well, it'll be a good test. So let's apply them. So let's apply the Art to Shine on the passenger side, the Kosh Chemi spray sealant on the driver's side. Brand new towel. And I'm gonna mist it onto the towel here. Be kind of generous on the towel. And just work it into the paint. You can apply this with an applicator if you like also. And kind of draw a line. I'm not going to tape it. I don't have to be that exacting. I'm just going to kind of draw an imaginary line and apply it. Application is super straightforward. Very, very easy. I'm going to do another one here just to make sure it's... Oh yeah, there we go. I can see it going on. <sighs> oh, got a fly that went right in it. Fly that went right in it just as it was flashing away. Okay, great, I can see it going on. And flip the towel, and it pretty much just flashes away, nice. All right, that's very, very easy, very easy to use. Feels nice, good. Next, Kosh Chemi spray sealant. Same thing, apply it onto the towel. It's kind of hard to see it go on here because I'm in weird lighting. Might have to change my angle here. This goes on extremely easy. There we go. I mean, it like flashes away immediately. And again, same, same slickness, pretty much. Feels really good. I'm just gonna go up here because I couldn't really see what I was doing. Just make sure to get proper coverage. I think that is good. All right, now, hard to tell on camera. You can't really see it. But I mean, you can see the reflection. It's, it's beautiful. Very, very glossy, very reflective, both sides. And slickness is pretty awesome. Oh, look at that. I can actually feel where I didn't uh, do the center. So you may see a little line of demarcation here. I, I can actually feel where it drags just slightly right there. Awesome, we'll see how those hold up. When it comes to application, you do want products that are easy to apply, and, and those are. They wipe on, they wipe off, no smearing, no residue, nothing. And then there are other products that you do need to use a damp towel to remove residue. 
So it just all has to do with the formulation. It doesn't mean one is bad and the other is good. It just has to do with the formulation, the way that the SiO2 polymers are combined and fused and all of that stuff. Sometimes that solution uh, that is used, like the hybrid solutions, <laughs> uh, SiO2 products, they need a damp towel to actually activate the SiO2 polymers and, and have them bond better. That's just the formulation. So it's not to say that this is a better formulation, it's simply different. And I know, people are gonna have their choices. They want something that's easier to apply like this, but these products are also pricier than other products like the Hybrid Solutions line. So, you know, that's where the difference lies. Is it a cheaper formulation? No, not necessarily. It's just the way it is. It's the way some certain companies are. So it all has to do with your, your personal choice and your budget. What do you want? Do you want products like this? Or do you want ones that are a little bit more affordable and just a different technique to apply? So it just all has to do with personal choice. So we're gonna use some Turtle Wax Wet and Black Tire Shine. Why? Because I have it. And I like to try different stuff. You can spray it either directly onto the tire or onto the brush. I just think the brush application is, um, you know, you get more control. And I feel you use less product that way, but whatever. That's just my, my method. Depending on your tire, you know, different dressings will perform differently. So sometimes they'll just suck right into the rubber and disappear and you're like, did you even apply anything? That just happens sometimes. Depends on the rubber. And other times, it, uh, it looks really, really nice. And at first too, like keep an eye on your dressing. The, f the first time you apply it, it'll look good. Give it a couple of minutes, go back and see if it has sucked into the tire. Okay guys, that's gonna do it for today's weekend wash. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions or comments, let me know down below. And stay tuned for fellow, fellow? For follow-up weekend washes to see how the products are doing on the old Sequoia. If you're interested in any of the products, then check out the links down below if you wanna grab them for yourself. And I hope you guys have a great day. We'll see you next time. Take care.